Hey guys, so, um, <laughs> this is my third time giving the introduction to Oang Band here, and I'll explain why in a minute. This is my third time giving the introduction, and my seventh video I'm recording on the topic, even though it's the first video that's going out. I'll explain that in a second, too. Um, but before I tell you anything about that, um, I, I do want to point out the fact that we are playing an Ang Band variant right off the bat. Um, I was very, very very saddened to die in Angban, which was the last long-term game we had going. I immediately said we need another long-term game going, and I was debating what to play. But here's the, a few bottom lines. Uh, first of all, there are a lot of Angban variants. Like, literally on the order of uh, officially recognized, maybe 60 Angban variants or so. Something like that. Currently. Maybe more. Um, and given the um, thrust of this channel... Um, which is to try and play every single English roguelike ever made, uh, that's free, every free English roguelike ever made, um, we will try and hit every single variant at some point or another. Um, even if we say, okay, we just played an Angman variant, so we should play an another long-term game. In terms of the other long-term games, there aren't as many. There are probably less than 60 that are that I can name off the top of my head, at least, that are games you would play for 100-plus episodes. Um you know, Adom would be one of them, but Adom doesn't have any variants. So let's say we played Adom next, and then we're back to another Angband variant, and we have like 59 more to go. Um, you know, we, we could play Tome, but Tome technically uh, is an is an Angband variant. And when we do approach it, we're going to approach it from the angle of looking at the very first variant he did, Pern Angband, translating that to Tome 2, I think, which was one of the most popular Tales of Middle Earth variants, and then move on to Tales of Majael. So uh, we will get there, but we'll get there via Angband. Um... So why specifically Oang Band? Uh, there are really two kinds of variants of Ang Band. One is a thematic change, Hell Band, Kathang Band, Steam Band, a lot of them I'm really looking forward to. The other is one that doesn't change the game itself, doesn't change the theme. It's still the pits of Ang Band, you're still here to kill Morgoth, it's still a fantasy setting. Um, but it does fuck around with the rules a little, and Oang Band does that. It messes with a lot of the rules. One of the ones I'm most excited about is the fact that it dispenses with the idea that you get multiple hits with lighter weapons. Um, so you're really free to, to take up heavier weapons. And, and Angband has always bugged me that you know a warrior at level 20 and 25 is still using a dagger instead of a battle axe because the dagger is somehow better uh, for him. Uh, it's just kind of weird. But uh, this is what we're playing. Now, why am I playing it for the seventh episode? I, I have four episodes recorded of, uh, of a specific character. Let's, let's start a new game. We'll look at that. You can't see, again, the, uh, the basic things up here. File, new. I'm clicking. Let's select a new character. We're going to play a male. Because I am male. Now, here's the, the, the two things I want to tell you about. Um, when we played our first game of, of Oang Band here, let me let my cat in. Um, I was thinking, hey, let's highlight... Oh, he doesn't want in. What the hell? Um, I was thinking, let's highlight the differences from Ang Band. Um, and one of those differences, there are four new races you can choose from. Maya, Shadow Fairy, Ent, and Bjorning. I chose Maya. Why? It's new. And look at those stats on the right. Strength. All the stats got bonuses. I'm like, this is a great character. Assuming that those stat increases that you get at the beginning would be offset by a, a, an extravagant experience penalty, which is how Ang Band handles most characters. If a race gets bonuses, it gets penalties to how much experience it needs to level up. Same thing with classes. But as I played, I started to realize that wasn't the case with the Maya. It turns out the Maya is kind of like an easy mode. It's made for characters or players who are new to either Angband itself or the genre of roguelikes or maybe O Angband, because it does make gameplay simpler. Um, and we were doing fine. We, for four episodes, we were doing really well. But I, uh, I, I just started to feel bad about it. I started to feel like, in the unlikely event that we do win, I'm always going to have in the back of my head. Yeah, but you won, you know, via cheating, sort of. Um, so I'm not discouraging anybody else. You want to play a Maya? Go for it. It's a really incredibly hard game. And that advantage may be, you know, just the thing that kicks you over the top. I don't know. But I don't want to do it. Um, my second game I played, which was like an hour ago, I played a Dwarven Warrior. And I died really early. <laughs> I died in the second episode. And I'm not going to do that with the Wang Band, especially given I already have four episodes recorded where I'm alive. So... We're going to try again as a Dwarven Warrior. Now, I should mention, after we pick Dwarf, let's take this. 50-foot Infravision, nice. He can only play a Warrior, Priest, or Necromancer. Depending on your race, there are limitations on what, what class you can play. In Oang Band, another major difference, in addition to having the four new races available, there are several new classes. Um, the Druid, the Necromancer, and the Assassin do not exist 
in Angband. Um, there are two new spell types. Uh, the, the usual m- magic spells that you need a spell book for exist. The usual priest spells that you need a prayer book for exists. They might have messed up which spells are available. I don't know. It sounds like they might have done that. But uh, whether they did or didn't, there are two new spell types as well. There's the druidic spell types where you need a, a stone of nature lore. Uh, it serves exactly the same purpose as a spell book. You just learn spells out of that instead. And the necromancer uses uh, books of necromancy. Uh, it serves the same purpose, but I, I imagine the spells are very necromantically themed. I'm intrigued as hell by that. Um, I love playing necromancers, but I'm not going to do it right now because, again, for me, over the years, the draw to Oangband has been I want to pick up a fucking Warhammer and use it like you would in most roguelikes um, and not feel compelled to stick with a dagger. So I don't want to play a spellcaster exclusively. Um, And I want somebody survivable. The Dwarven Warrior seems okay. So I hope no one's disappointed that we're not looking at the new spells. They're there. Maybe I'll play again some other time, and plus there's a million other variants to come. We're going to see a lot of new spellcaster types. But for now... In the version of the game where you get to use heavy weapons freely, unlike most Angband variants, playing a damn warrior. Um, let's try a standard roller. I, I I did an auto roller; it was taking forever. Let's just do a damn standard roller. Um, or even point based. Let's do point based. How about that? Preserve artifacts. I don't know quite what this means versus CS. So we can put points in. Is this this is its base? Uh, let's see. We've already spent our points. If if we wanted to take this as our base, nah, man. Well, my last character was so much better. <laughs> but this is probably fairer. My last character with the, with the uh, auto roller had much higher stats. And he died at dungeon level 2. But nonetheless, um, you know what? This is, a, this is kind of a default character, right? Um, this is what it recommends with the points spent. So maybe we will take this. He's not as good as my last character. But whatever, you know? He starts with a lot more gold. He starts with 2,500 gold. So the other guy who had 100. No, let's press escape to go back. Male. Dwarf. Warrior. Let's do an auto roller. Yes, preserve artifacts. With the auto roller, you can specify like minimums you, you will accept um, for various uh, categories. There are limits you can put. Like if I put 18 here now, if I spent too many points. Whoa, I didn't mean to do that. Okay, well, whatever. It looks like we auto-rolled somebody who came up with... All right, Charisma 5. Okay, fuck. Not quite what I was trying to do, to be honest, but uh, apparently I took it. Any any Charisma was fine. So our guy is not well-liked. He's going to have trouble buying shit. But look at that strengthened uh, constitution and stuff. He also starts with a lot less gold than, for instance, the other guy. The other guy we were looking at had 2,500. This guy has 200. My last guy had 100, which means he had even higher stats. But whatever. Let's take this guy. Let's give him a name. How do we do that? Enter to accept. Enter a name for your character. Um, Hal. Halvor. Darkfender. I don't care. I'm taking it. You're a. You are the only child of a dwarven warrior. You are a credit to the family of dark brown eyes, straight black hair, a one foot beard. And a dark p- complexion. My last guy had a two-foot beard, man. All right, here we are. I'm going to do one thing right off the bat. A few things right off the bat. Um, you see, we're, we settled on a tile set. It saves my tile set from game to game, so we're going to keep this tile set. I'm going to punch in a little closer because I find it difficult to see that stuff. We're going to use a single window. I used uh, multiple windows in Angband. It made it hard to record, and I don't mind the single window, to be honest. So we're going to use uh, this. We're going to triple tile mode. I'll have to set that every time we load the game. Um, now I can see what I'm looking at. Uh, We also want to do a few options we want to set on. Uh, These did not save last time. Maybe they they did. We'll find out. Gameplay options. Is that right? No. Efficiency options. Keep the player centered. We want to put that to yes. Keep the player centered while running. We want to put that to yes. Good enough. I think that's it. Um... I hope that's it. That'll, that'll save from game to game when we play this particular character. If we start a new character, apparently it doesn't save. We can see to our right, if we press L and look. I'm not going to go through the commands in great detail in this playthrough. If you want to know how to play Angband, look at my Angband videos. And in Angband, I'll probably tell you if you want to know how to play Angband, look at my Moria videos, because it's very similar there, too. Um, I'll talk a bit about it, but um, 
not in great, not in as great a depth. But press L in a direction. You can see the cursor leaps. That's a filthy street urchin. You can see they have the health bar. That's its health bar right underneath my hit points. Not sure what the color coding means, to be honest with you. Also not sure how to look at that other guy. There we go. Uh, it's a mangy looking leper. You can also see spec 2 in the bottom left corner. Um, that is new in Oang Band. Oang Band introduces something really, really cool that the other Aang, the regular Aang Band doesn't have, and that is talents. Let's press O. Do you want to or call abilities? View abilities or learn special ability? Let's l learn a new special ability. We start the game for some reason with two special abilities available. One of them is definitely because we're a warrior. I'm not sure what the other one is for. But we had two. You can see spec two in the bottom. We're going to take two things here. We're going to take extra... Extra attacks. Fast attacking. Let's me get in uh, the odd extra blow. Yes, I'm sure of that. We're also going to take a uh, shift O. Learn a specialty. We're going to take armor mastery. It makes my armor, my body armor do more for me. Yes, I'm sure. Let's see what we have for body armor and such. So we have a long sword. We have chain mail. Nice. And a wooden torch we're using, of course. Same thing I started with last time. Exact same things I started with last time. Okay. Last time I dove a little quicker than I'm than I normally would. I dove quicker because I was like I don't want to bore the audience and I'm probably safe, right? I wasn't safe. <laughs> I'm gonna try not to dive that quick this time. Let me see if I can buy a pick or a shovel before we head in. A pick. Let's purchase that. Purchase K. It's expensive as fuck, but whatever. Uh, in this version of uh, Oang Band, the default at least, I don't know if you can set it on or off. You can sell items. I'm gonna keep that on. Um, you can buy items. Obviously, you can't haggle. We're going to keep that. That makes the game much easier to play. Let's purchase a uh, pick. That's right. We want one of those. Um, buying a pick. Yes. You quickly settle on a price. That's fine. For 150. Yes, we're going to buy that. We have 50 gold remaining. Let's, because we're here, do nothing else. <laughs> yeah, we're good with our torches for now. Maybe we'll go to the... Uh, armor store purchase for 50 we can get hard leather boots let's purchase that purchase hard leather boots one set of those is fine for 23 is fine let's wear you have to press asterisk again in uh, Ang Band to dispense with that in this it's back this of course oh Ang Band is based on a much earlier version of Ang Band version 2 point something um, last, the best I know, Oang Bam was last updated in 2006, whereas Ang Bam was updated in the last year or so, 2016, 2017, somewhere in there, for the current version. Oh yeah, our armor class is up to 27. Let's also go buy a cloak, because we can. And I want to, let's just kill that guy, because he came near us. You come near me, you get stabbed. I don't trust people in town. Let's purchase a cloak, one, for five gold shirt, and let's wear that. Asterisk. A cloak. Okay, that is going to be it for now. We're going to do one other thing before we head in the dungeon. Um, a trick we learned first in Moria, but it got changed a bit in Ang Band, and it's the same here as it is in Ang Band. We're going to press... Pardon me for slurring my speech. I'm dry mouthed because I already recorded two videos of this like an hour ago. Before I died as a dwarf. Um, shift and the left curly Q bracket to inscribe which item... Let's press asterisk, and we're going to press... Uh, let's do D, the pick. What are we going to inscribe the pick with? We're going to inscribe it with at W2. Why are we doing that? Because when we press wield, W for wield, you can see the pick is D. Uh, that's fine. If we put wield D, it'll wield the pick instead of the long sword. But uh, as we accumulate more items, that letter is going to shift around. It could be E in a minute. It could be M eventually. Um, so rather than have to figure out what letter is it in, and have to search the damn list. By putting in that inscription of at W2, it's telling it if we say wield number two, it always means the pick. So we're gonna wield two. There, we're using the pick, we're not using the long sword. Let's inscribe that long, let's kill, fuck. Hitting him with a damn pick. <laughs> let's um, inscribe the long sword. D. With at wield one. Whoops, I missed it. At wield one. There we go. Wield one. Our short sword is back out. Let's go down in the dungeon. Whoops. We have everything we need to take on level one. Got a little bit of gold out of him. You don't get any experience for killing people in the town. 
I try not to do it as a rule, but if they come near me... Oh, the stairs continue down. We could go down to dungeon level 2. Absolutely not. <laughs> I was much higher level. I was character level 4 and I died on dungeon level 2. I'm not going down there. Until we're character level 6. Warning you right now, that's the policy. Four levels higher than the depth we want to proceed to. How do you attack and move? You move using a numpad, attack by bumping into shit. As a dwarven warrior, most of the monsters on this level should be pretty easy for us to kill. I'm not anticipating a lot of trouble. I should be looking at this shit first just to make sure it's not like a special thing. It's not. It's just a gray mold and a white worm mask. That thing can poison me and it can multiply. I can breed. But it didn't. There's a lot of monsters there. Um, let's try and kill the icky thing. Let's back into the hallway. They're not going to come out. A the AI is better in this than it is in a lot of uh, Angban variants. That's one of the things they're quite proud of. We're going to have to rest in a second. Let's go up in this corner and rest. You can see our hit points were halved during that combat. Rest. Shift R. Hit enter. There we go. Back to full hit points. When you rest and put the and symbol, the ampersand, um, it means rest until your hit points and your spell points are back. We will never have spell points. But uh, our hit points came back. Let's press S for search. Found a secret door. Pressed it multiple times, but I found it. Let's press it here again. Nothing here, apparently. Period. And to the left, the auto walks until it comes to a turn in the passage or sees a monster or something. Let's, uh, let's go in this room. Nothing here. Let's go through this door. Bumping into doors to open them, or you can press O in the direction. You can also close them. C, south. Or Actually, it doesn't even need a, doesn't even need a, uh, a direction because there's only one door there. It assumes it must be the door you're standing next to if there's only one. Otherwise, you'd have to put one. You can't open or close this because it's broken. Still blocks line of sight. Back to there. I want to search here. Nope. This is serious. I wasn't sure if we could get through to that uh, little passage there. I'm going to try to complete a circuit of level 1 before we finish this episode. If we can in the span of the next 13 minutes. Whoops, we found a door. But again, I'm, I'm, then we'll return to town, sell some stuff, buy some stuff. We will not be moving on to dungeon level 2 until we are character level 6. I don't want to die again that soon. Also sorry for the sort of sparse uh, intro to this game. I've been kind of rushing through this first episode just because it's my third time playing this first episode. <laughs> and I'm a little, a little, little impatient to get on with it but as a character who's not a cheater. Or as a character who's not advantaged. Let's put it that way. That's a rock lizard, I think. Dead. It's a dead rock lizard. We need six more experience. You can see under our level, we are character level two. I didn't even notice we leveled up. Um, we need six more to go to character level three. There, potion and scroll. The potions and scrolls, as in Angband, as in many roguelikes, begin the game as unidentified. Once you've identified what they are, that's the other thing we're going to turn off, incidentally. Equals. I'm going to show you something right now. If we go to interface. We have a shimmering potion of berserk strength. Let's go to equals. That's our options. Um, gameplay options, perhaps? We're not going to auto-scum for... No, we're not going to do any of this shit that's uh, annoying. Disarm traps automatically. I'll tell you about auto-scum in a minute. No, not worry about anything else here. Interface options. Uh, show region affected by using detection spells. That's set to yes. We want to leave that on. It must be efficiency options. Um, come on, man. Really? It's a little hard to read all this you know, congested text. Fuck, what are we doing here? Interface. Show flavors as we want. Turn this off. Let's put it to no by pushing right on the keyboard, escaping this. Now we go to our interface, or in our inventory rather. It's a potion of berserk strength, not a shimmering potion. It was telling us the descriptor of the potion, which can be neat for role playing purposes, but if I find in my experience it makes it hard to figure out what's in your inventory at a glance. So, Shift M to see the level. Let's go over here to the left. A giant white centipede. Wow, 
white mouse they can replicate, as you can see. They're spawning. Let's kill them quickly. Shift T to remove this rubble. Now in um, in Moria, all rubble is impassable. You have to tunnel it out to get through it. In Angband, some of it's passable, some of it's impassable. At least in current Angband. In this, it's all passable, but you can tunnel it out to see if there's anything underneath it. So it's worth taking the time to do so, I think. You don't need a pick or shovel to do this. Um, you can just do that with your hands. Sometimes there's stuff underneath it, like treasure and stuff. It is wasting character time um, by like making us. It's making us more hungry, I guess, as we waste time, and our lights getting dimmer as we waste time. But I'm gonna do it. As you see, we found a scroll. Now, how do you learn what a scroll or potion is? You can use it. That'll tell you what it is, but that it can be dangerous because they can uh, they can hurt you. Um, you can you know use there's a dagger. We'll take that to sell. Um, you can use identify scrolls or identify spells if you have them. But you can also bring them to town and sell them, get some money for it, and then you learn what it is. Sometimes you sell really good stuff for cheap, mind you, because you don't know what it is. But whatever, cloudy potion. We'll take that. We you, wicker shield. Let's wield that. This could be cursed, but let's wield it anyway. H. We're using a wicker shield, so our armor class went up to 30 now. Kobold. Got a scroll. You have to level up fairly substantially before you get more spec points. Maybe at level 5, maybe every 5 levels you get more? I'm not sure. You get in a shield bash. You have slain the fruit bat. I didn't even try to get in a shield bash. It was just automatic, apparently. My fruit bat's dead. Either way. We're level 3. We need 17 more experience to get to level 4. The level at which I stupidly went down a level in my last game and paid for it. Let's rest until we're fully healed. We are. What is this? Leather sandals. We already have um, hard leather boots. Let's not put on the sandals unless we learn that they're really good. Right now, they would just be inferior. They weigh less, so we could carry a bit more, but they uh, well, they wouldn't give us as much armor protection. So screw that noise. Search, 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 search. Nothing. Good enough. You can see our character st uh, stats. Like, we're not very good at searching. Our perception is poor. Our fighting and bows are both up to mediocre. That's not bad. Those things will level up as you level up and as your attributes increase and sometimes as uh, maybe maybe some items can influence it. I don't know. But it's not like some games where it's like if you use a fighting a lot, you therefore get better at fighting. Let's make sure we're still using our sword. We are. Scroll. Kill a gray mole. We need 12 more experience. Um, as you can see, too, let's look at this guy. And press R for recall. We can learn what we know about it. Um, he is worth 0 .33 experience points for a third level character. Um, a lot of, uh, well, you need more experience to level up as you get higher in level. Another good potion we can sell. A gloopy green potion. Um, but also, monsters become worth less experience. So, eventually, it kind of forces your hand. You can't just like stay on level 1. As, well, you could. You can stay on level 1 at character level 100 and farm, I guess, but it would sure take you probably literally centuries of time, like in real time, to, to get up a level then. Because um, the monsters would be worth almost nothing, like maybe 1% of 1% of 1% of an experience point, and you would probably need millions to go up a level, you know? So it does force your hand to move on eventually, but we can stay here until probably... Um, I intend to stay here until character level 6. This may take a little bit of time. Probably two episodes, maybe even three. On dungeon level 1. Like, like two more episodes at most. Meanwhile, we'll be getting gold, getting better equipment, and leveling up. So we'll be ready. We'll be ready when we go down the uh, the next level. We, we met a crow of Durthang, whatever the hell that is. It's a new monster. Didn't exist in Angband original, as far as I know. We met two of them, and they killed us. They were vicious as fuck. We were not ready for them. And I, I thought they were bats at first. I was kind of weighed in and started spamming the attack key and then realized, oh shit, I'm dying. <laughs> that was dumb of me. 
All right. A little bit more to explore. Then we'll go back to the level. Uh, we'll go back to the top level. If we uh, have a flask of oil, if we get a lantern later, which we will. Lantern would let us see three squares instead of two, and it would burn longer. We just have to carry oil to refill it. Floating eye, it's dead. It's dead. Search. Not finding anything. Let's go north. Let's go west. A huge white snake. How is it? A uh, large white snake, rather. R. Don't know how much it's worth or anything because we uh, this character hasn't killed any. It looks like the monster memory may not carry across. In, in Oang Band, it looks like the monster memory does not carry across across playthroughs. In Ang Band proper, as you kill monsters in Ang Band and Moria, your next character, even if you die, your next character has the benefit of everything you learned about monsters. That character still knows. Um, in this, it looks like it's only what your current character has learned. Like if we look, at, if we look at that now, and press R, we'll know a lot about it because we've killed a ton of them. It's a large, slimy mass of worms. We've killed at least eight. It's very common. Normally found at depths of 50 feet, where we are. It moves erratically means it doesn't always move towards us, and slowly means that we move faster. We get more attacks in too. A kill of this natural creature is worth half an experience point for a fourth level character. We're clearly fourth level by way now. It breeds explosively. It can crawl on you to poison, so it can poison us. Let's rest up. There we go. Not going down. Screw that noise. Let's go back to town by the staircase. We have just enough time to sell off some stuff, learn some stuff. And um, let's go right in here. I think the holy shop will let us sell some stuff. Let's sell a cloudy potion. What do we learn about it? It's worth 10. It was worth 12 to my last character. My last character had better charisma. So having a low charisma means you, you earn less money from sales and you purchase things for more expensively. But oh well. It's a potion of confusion. We could have chucked that at a creature to confuse it, but we don't own it anymore. But at least we'll know them in the future if we encounter them. A gloopy green. It is a potion of blindness. Again, we could throw it at a creature to blind them. If we had drunk that mistakenly, we'd have been blinded for a while. Although I think as a dwarf, we have the innate ability we can't be. What's this? Scroll of Summon Monster. All these, all these would have been bad if we'd have just tested them by drinking or reading that. That would have summoned a monster that would have attacked us. We have two of these, so we'll learn what one of them is and keep one of them, maybe. Detect Invisible. Okay, we can detect invisible creatures. That's great. Let's keep that for now. We may need it. Phase Door. We may need... Oh, well, we can't keep that. Of course, we sold it. But at least we'll recognize them in the future. And this one. Enchant Weapon. Deadliness. Yippee, you have no more scrolls of Enchant Weapon Deadliness. Now, I would say let's use it right away on our long sword, but I'm going to show you something else I've learned about this character. Let's get out of here. Shift O. Um, here you can view our abilities. So here's the ones we took, fast attacking and armor mastery, but here's the ones we innately have. Fast bow shots, fast crossbow shots. We can efficiently spread our attacks over multiple opponents when we hit level, level 40. So these ones don't come into play until level 30, level 35. But we have strong shield bashing. You are adept at fighting with your shield as well as your weapon. Detailed object sensing. I mean, maybe that happens automatically, and we saw it happen once. You obtain relatively specific pseudo-identify information. We'll, we'll talk about that when it comes up. This is at level one. You, you can learn an extra special ability at level one. We did that already. But we have a polearm preference. We're slightly more skilled with axes and pole arms than we are with melee, other melee weapons. So we probably want to switch over to one of those two rather than the sword, and certainly before enchanting it. We're not good with bows, but we could be good with slings and such, and maybe crossbows, I don't know. And we cannot be blinded, which is awesome. That's what we know. Um, what do we need and or want? We're still fine for light sources and such for level one. Let's see if we can get a... What do we, how much money do we have? We've got 100 experience, or 100, rather, uh, gold. Let's just see if we have anything. Let's go in here. He doesn't have any axes or anything, so we're not going to buy anything like that. We could buy a sling. But I don't think we're going to right now. How about... Armor? Is it worthwhile to get better armor? Or some Cure Light Wound potions? Let's get some of those. Purchase. D. How many? Let's get five of them if we can. For 140, we can't afford that. 
Let's purchase D, three of them. All right, for 84 gold. So we have a few Cure Light Wound potions in case we need them. And we probably will need them given we have no other means of curing ourselves. We're still fine on all our fronts. We still got lots of torches. We still got uh, lots of food. We're good to go back to level one and stay there for now. Let's sell the dagger, which we know, and the sandals. Let's sell off stuff we don't need to carry so we're not like walking around with the extra stuff. This boil covered wretch is following me. Let's sell him our dagger. H. For a nine. Okay, that's fine. And let's sell the, uh, wherever the shield store is. The location, like which 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 store is which, randomizes with each uh, with each playthrough, like with the positioning of them. One of them is our house too, where we can go and drop stuff. Just walk by him. All right, if you're gonna come near me, I'm gonna kill you, beggar. Let's sell him our leather sandals. Enter for two gold. I don't think there's anything else we really want right now, or need, or can afford, more to the point. So let's head back to the dungeon entrance, and we'll call it quits right here. Alright guys, that was our first episode of Oang Band. I hope to god I get more than two episodes out of it. I hope I get at least more than four, or else I'm better off going with my Maya character, and you'll see more of the game. Um, it's just my problem feeling guilty about it. Um, but I don't know that we will. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll do our best. We're going to go nice and slow. This is a very, very deadly game. And like most roguelikes, it's got permadeath. If we die, it's game over. There's no coming back from that. So let's try not to do that, shall we? I'm going to press, uh, I'm going to go up here with my mouse to file. Putting file save, just in case. And now file exit. I think it'll auto-save when I do that, but just in case it didn't, there you go. Okay, guys, that's it for now. i got to go, uh, clean some stuff with because my wife wants me to, <laughs> or I'll get in trouble. Um, but when I'm done that, I may come back and play more. We'll see. All right, see you guys.